Hello. Today we're talking about the biggest mistake actors make on social media. I'm Heidi Dean. I'm a social media strategist for actors and artists, if we haven't met, um, and a backstage expert. And my clients include Emmy Award winners, Broadway stars, producers, casting directors, and actors just like you. It is pretty much my job to take actors and artists from total social rookies to social rock stars, no matter where they are at in their career. And I see we already have some people here, which is awesome. Very, very cool. Hi, Sam. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Adam. Hi, Jean. You can tell me if you can see me or hear me. Now, social media, guys, can be an amazing thing for your career, okay? Truly amazing. When you use it wisely, it's an invaluable tool for researching, building relationships, and advancing your career. However, if you use it carelessly, it can actually make you foolish. It could actually do your career harm. But don't worry, I know that sounded super negative. Today, I'm going to identify really the 10 biggest mistakes I see actors making on social media every single day, and I'm going to show you how to fix them, okay? Because social media is becoming more important than ever. With the business going more online, with self-taping, people are looking you up, and we'll talk about that today. Let me just say hi to some people in the chat. Let me know where you guys are coming from. Hi, Sam. Hi, Christine. You can see me and hear me. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Mark. Hey, Melvin. Hey, Brett Schubert. I love you so much. Hey, C. Michelle. Perfect. So I'm just going to dive in because we have 10 things to cover today. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Bella from New York, New Jersey. Perfect. I'm coming to you from New York as well. And it's a little less hot today here in New York. So I'm super happy about that. So I'm going to cover 10 big social media mistakes for actors today, and then I'm going to open it for some Q&A at the end. So you might want to save your questions in the chat for the end, just so I can actually see them. It's hard for me to talk and see this fast moving chat like it's going on right now. Awesome. We have people from all over London, Puerto Rico, Houston, Jersey. You can hear me from England, from Dallas. You so rock. You so rock, Pamela. Thank you. All right. So first social media mistake that I see every week, every day, <laughs> is don't be a spoiler, guys. We're starting really simple today. Um, don't broadcast about a role, you know, until you've been given the okay. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a Broadway show. It doesn't matter if it's a national tour, a commercial, a voiceover. Um, it doesn't matter. Make sure you ask the, uh, the show if it's okay to announce your involvement or check IMDb. If the, if the project's on IMDb and they're announcing it there, then obviously your involvement is is public, okay? Um, but actors have lost jobs for this over and over again. And very important, if you have signed an NDA, okay, which can actually happen as early as the audition, um, if you sign an NDA, don't talk about the project, don't talk about booking it, don't talk about having the audition, and I know it sounds silly, but I see this happening. That will keep you from booking the job period, okay? <laughs> um, and let's extend this a little bit to your set life uh, photos. You know, if you've been given the go-ahead that you can post and you have some pictures from set or pictures from rehearsal, just be careful. Look at that photo and look what's around you. Ask yourself, who am I taking that photo with? Make sure if you're not familiar with the show that you get familiar with the show because I can't tell you there's so many stories about an actor so excited that they're taking a picture with one of the lead actors, but guess what? Nobody in the general public knew that lead actor was coming back on the show yet. Oops, spoiler, right? Wedding rings being on a lead actor's finger. Um, oops, spoiler, now those main characters are getting married, right? So just be very careful. A lot of times with onset pictures, it's better to wait until the project actually airs, unless you know it's just you and you're not giving anything away, okay? Number one, don't be a spoiler. Super, super simple, right? Give me a got it if you guys got number one in the chat or give me a like, okay? Number two, this is a biggie for artists. This isn't a biggie if you are just using Twitter and Instagram as a normal person, okay? Constantly retweeting without actually talking, okay? And I say retweeting, but I also mean constantly sharing on Facebook, constantly regramming or sharing other people's stories without ever talking yourself right? As an artist, you have a voice. We need to hear your story. We need to hear your voice on your social media if you're using it for your career or you're just using it for playtime, right? Um, so don't become what I call the retweet robot, 
And you know what I'm talking about. So those people, you click over to their profiles and I have to scroll for like days to actually see something in their own voice. I see retweet, retweet, retweet. I don't even see like a quote retweet where they're actually, you know, you can hit retweet, but then actually have your own opinion, your own thought on the tweet. I don't even see that. So don't become the retweet robot, guys. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your story. Okay. Um, and don't get me wrong. Sharing other people's content is fantastic. Sharing is caring. But Tell us what you think every once in a while. I need to hear your voice, okay? And um, once we get to Q and A, if you're having trouble finding your voice or trouble, maybe you're doing this because you can't think of anything to post. I can answer those questions in the Q and A, okay? Brett, you like the retweet robot, right? But, but you know what I'm talking about. You, you. I know Brett. Brett and I are friends, um, and he's a backstage expert. You guys might have seen him um, go live as well. Um, you, if you're on Twitter, you see it all the time. I need to hear your voice as an artist. Okay, so don't be a spoiler and don't be a retweet robot. Okay, number three is follow instructions. So number three really relates to self tapes and relates to those video platforms. So um, if you are asked to put yourself on tape for a project, be sure to follow their submission instructions. And yes, sometimes you're going to just be doing this right through whatever, you know, online casting profile you're using. Maybe it's right through Actors Access, right through Ecocast. But a lot of times you're still going to be asked to upload something to Vimeo, to YouTube. Follow the instructions. Do not upload these publicly. Make sure they're unlisted or private. Okay, guys? Because what's happening here is you're giving away copyrighted information. I see a lot of you guys also, after you do a self-tape, you're like putting them on playlist on your YouTube channel. Mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that until we know that that TV show has aired or that film has premiered. You could really be giving away information. And I think I think what's going to happen um, very soon because we're we're seeing such a shift in the industry to more self tapes. We're seeing seeing this big change. Um, I think we're going to have, you know, more signing off on contracts. I think we're going to have um, better instructions on how to upload say, self tapes for this exact reason. Now. On that line of follow instructions, please, please, please. I see this is something I see every day on Instagram. Don't upload yourself tapes to Instagram, guys. I mean, unless, like I said, less like on YouTube, you know that show has aired or that film has premiered, right? Um, you're giving away information. You know, if you feel inclined to tell people, because of course, you know, having an audition and doing a self tape is part of your actor's life, show us a blooper. You know, show us, you know, maybe maybe it's just actually getting a glimpse of the character that you're creating that day, right? Maybe it's a really funny, quirky character. You can do that without showing us, telling us the name of the show or giving us any information, but do not post your self tapes, not even with the sound off, because I'm seeing that too. Okay, guys, give me a got it. This is really super important. You will not book that job if you're doing that, okay? Especially if they see it. <laughs> give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Steven, Roger. Hey, Roger. Perfect. I see so many familiar faces today. Awesome. Let me have a sip of coffee. Whew. Okay. All right. So don't be a spoiler. Don't be the retweet robot. Number three, follow instructions. Okay. Don't put those self tapes up everywhere. Number four. I, I mean, it's, I feel silly even saying this one, <laughs> but because I'm not a bitter, a bitter person, but it has to be said. Don't be a bitter actor online. Um, I know it can be hard to stay positive in this business sometimes, but social media is not your diary, okay? Um, and the quickest way to being unfollowed is to send negative energy out into the interwebs, right? <laughs> into social media. Um, so, you know, if you want to rant, rant, if you want to vent, um, get a journal, phone a friend, right? But social media is not your diary. Um, and this is something I see every day as well. I have a friend who I just spoke to a couple days ago who's a casting director, and she was just telling me this story. She's like, I can't believe it. I was I just saw an actor bitching about um, you know, about not getting cast in her project publicly online, guys. Do you think she's ever gonna call that actor in? Oh, right. Um, I think sometimes we think people aren't gonna see things, but this business is a lot smaller than you think. And social media has actually made the business smaller. It really has. By the way, we're connected to people, but also the information they hear. Okay? You totally agree. Yes, Adam, they make these mistakes. And Adam, I copied something you wrote down right in the beginning of the chat, and we're going to get to that one in just a second. They do. They do every second. Okay? Even big people do. Okay? 
Um, all right. So the next one of these 10 mistakes, I guarantee you guys are making at least one. I'd be shocked if you're not. <laughs> um, number six, I guarantee you 90% of you guys are making. We're still on number five. Number five is also simple. It's be kind, guys. Um, if you don't agree with someone on social media, unfriend them, unfollow them, mute them. Okay. If it's someone that's important to your career, just mute them. You don't have to unfollow them. Um, but don't leave hateful comments. Don't get in an argument with everyone you see in your feed. Okay, guys, it's really important. Don't try to teach them a lesson. Okay. Remember the golden rule, tweet others the way you wish to be tweeted. Seriously. Okay. Number six, we're getting into bigger ones now, but I couldn't not say one through five because those are things that I see people do every day. And some of those are things that actually could cost you a job. Okay. Um, they are looking for people they want to be around. Yes. Be someone you want to work with. Exactly. Something we're going to talk about coming up. Um, number six is that your first impression makes you look like a rookie. And we're talking about social media first impression. Okay. And this is the one where I think a lot of you guys are going to be guilty in some way. Okay. Today casting, it happens fast and most of it happens online more so now than ever, right? Um, and it's very possible nowadays that you're gonna make your first impression online before you ever meet someone in the audition room, okay? Um, so say a casting director has a couple spots to fill, but they don't really know you. What are they gonna do, guys? Where are they gonna find out more information about you if, when they're deciding if they should bring you in? You know, they looked at your online profiles, um, they've seen your stuff, but there's a bunch of people they can bring in. What do you guys do? Tell me in the chat. Where do you go when you want to find out information about people? What do you do? Where do you go? I'll wait. I'll have some coffee while I wait for you guys. <laughs> Where do you guys go? On social media. Yep. Google. Exactly. Awesome. Both, right? You hear over and over again that, that people are going straight to Instagram because they want to actually see if you actually look, at, look like your headshots. The true story, guys. But also they Google you, casting directors, directors, they use Google. And guess what is the first thing to come up in search on Google for your name if you're using your social media under your name, obviously. Guess what? Your social media. Okay? So that's your social media is a direct reflection of the person they're going to work with, with for hours. Okay? So you need to make sure your first impression doesn't look like a rookie. It's got to be, it's got to be cleaned up. It's got to be professional. It's got to show us who you are, right? And it's got to have your voice. Remember, don't be the retweet robot. <laughs> um, so if it looks rookie, if it looks like a rookie or unprofessional, you know, it can actually keep you get from getting called in, guys. I, I hear this over and over again from my colleagues. I, I speak all over the country for SAG-AFTRA and I sit on panels all the time. And it's the number one thing, even more than followers that they talk about, agents and casting directors and directors, that they're looking you up and your first impression is critical, okay? And they're really only going to make a decision in a couple seconds by what they see. If they see sloppy, unprofessional online presence in their quick, you know, two-second first impression glance, that means sloppy, unprofessional actor, even if it is not true. They just don't have time to dig deeper and find out more, okay, guys? So make sure you clean up that first impression. Now, this is a huge topic. In fact, it's such a huge topic that Katie, can you drop uh, the live, the first live I did for you guys two months ago? Two months ago, I did a live called Clean Up Your Social Media for Actors. It's an hour where I walk you guys through a 10 point checklist to do this, to make sure you look awesome when people are looking you up in the business, when people Google you. Um, so I'm not going to dive into number six today. Um, go watch that live. That will be, that's going to help you guys stop making this mistake and really rock out that first impression for your career. I'll give you one other resource as well that will take that checklist even further. And that is, I have a ultimate social media uh, checklist for actors. It's a 30 page ebook. It's totally free and it's in the description below. Um, you can also get it at ebookforactors.com. But those two things that live on backstage and that ebook, that free ebook is like the perfect combination for cleaning up your first impression. Okay. Like I said, um, a lot of times we get stuck on the follower uh, topic being the most important thing for actors. But honestly, straight from the director's casting director's agent's mouth, um, your, fir your first impression is really the most important thing. So give me a got it so you guys understand that. All right. I'm having a look at my daughter's apple juice today. My blood sugar was feeling a little bit low. I think it's all the weather changes we've been having. I don't know if your weather 
where you guys are has been all over the place, but it's been 100 degrees. It's been 70 degrees. It's been all over the place. Cool. It's pure gold. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is so important. We, we Like I said, we get stuck on the wrong topics. Followers, 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 which we'll talk about in number nine, but there's other things that are just as important. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So that was number six. Your first impression is crucial. Number seven is how you are approaching your relationships. And really it is that most actors are kind of there. You guys are treating your online world completely opposite to how you would do something on, on the offline world, right? What you do online is it's what you guys, a lot of you guys are doing. It's like you're walking up to people that you've never even met on the street and saying, hi, nice to meet you. Can you do me a favor? right? But that would never work in real life. And what I mean by that, how you're saying, hi, nice to meet you. Can you do me a favor? Is you guys have decided you want to meet someone, which is good. Maybe you're being targeted and you find them on social media. You follow them. You like them. You, you commented on everything. But right away, you ask for a favor. You ask for a favor without building the relationship first. And that is like walking up to someone on the street saying, hi, nice to meet you. Can you do me a favor? And it just doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work at all. Um, occasionally, maybe if there's a verified check mark, I will stop and go, who is this person? But most of the time, it just gets blocked out. Okay? Um, you know, don't ask for feedback on your headshots, on your website or reel from people you just met. Build that relationship first. Or attend lives on backstage. Attend. There's so many things going on in the industry where you might have an opportunity to do that. But they're opening up the floor at that point then. Okay, don't just go do that on their social media. Um, and even if someone follows you, you've got to know a follow is like an extended handshake. It's an introduction. It is not an opportunity to ask for an audition. Okay, build that relationship first. And I actually wrote something down. Um, Adam Hawkins, who had just said, do people really make these mistakes? Yeah, they do. And you know they do, Adam, because what you wrote in the chat, the first comment, spam cast social media tip spam casting directors constantly until they give you a role to shut you up. And I know you had a happy face, so it was a joke. But the problem is, that's what a lot of you guys are doing. If you're constantly tagging people in the business in your photos um, to get them to notice you, um, if you're constantly spamming them with comments and Facebook direct messages, that is not the way to find success. They aren't just going to, as he says, you know, give you a role to shut you up. They're just going to block you. And it sounds mean, it sounds rude, but they have thousands of people doing this to them. And I know this because I got my start, I'm not always telling my whole story, I got my start in social media. I've been in the space for eight years now. And I got my start um, running social media for really big actors and some producers and casting directors. I was acting like them and I was on the other side of the table. So I saw this behavior over and over and over again every day. It actually blew my mind. And it was one of the reasons I decided to branch out and start helping actors because I felt like you guys were not obviously getting this training, this media, social media training to teach you how to properly build relationships. Okay. So you need to start approaching your relationships more like a telephone conversation. Okay. More like a telephone than a megaphone. Don't just scream at people to get them to notice you. Have conversations with them, like telephone conversations, guys, to start building relationships, okay? And this is a whole nother topic as well. Katie knows this. Uh, we did a live just on building relationships on social media. Um, you guys can go watch that as well. I think this might be number seven for me. So we have covered a lot of topics, okay? And yes, Brett, building relationships, it takes time. It takes time and you've got to add that value right? It's like social currency. And over time, as you add that currency, it's going to mount up for something and they're going to click over to find out more about you because you've been adding value to their conversation, not just making it all about, all about you. Okay. It's turning that relationship into a we, not an all about me, me, me. Got it? There you go. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. So that is the live right there. She just put in there about networking and building relationships. Okay. And that's going to, that's going to walk you. We're really going to talk about um, who you, who you want to know in the business and where you're going to find them and how you're going to do it. So that, that live is kind of gold actually. <laughs> Mark, you love my clock. Awesome. I love my clock too. And it actually has a new item on here. I know somebody a couple lives ago says, do you ever change your the, things on your clock? I do. And you get 10 points if you notice which one is new on the clock. <laughs> oh, 
All right, guys, number eight, so we can get to questions. Number eight is similar to some of the things we've talked about, but it's, you don't think before you tweet. I know when I say tweet, I mean post, snap, put out your TikToks, okay? Um, every time you post, you need to ask yourself two questions. I see TikTok, 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 that is the new one. Um, it is becoming more and more important for actors. We can talk about it in the Q&A. Um, you don't think before you tweet. So before you post anything on social media, ask yourself two questions. Um, does this post honor my contract or NDA? Obviously, if it's about a show. We talked about that. That was number one. Don't be a spoiler, right? And number two, does this post show my best self? Okay. When I say best self, I don't mean like your Insta perfect life, not you, your fake life. No, I mean your best self. Remember the person that they're going to want to spend hours with on set or days or months on a show with. Okay. That's your best self. Okay. So think about it. What does your social media say about you? I hope it's a positive, right? <laughs> so then what I sometimes see is that actors, they they often forget that they're using social media as a business, right? When you go from using social media for playtime and transition into using it with a purpose, you forget that you're using it as a business tool, right? Um, so think before you tweet, guys. Think about the topics you're tweeting about. Um, are they on brand? Are they age appropriate? Um, my One of my newest clients is, their manager called me up. Is kind of a crisis call. Um, they're straight to me from Disney because they are not representing the Disney brand. They are not being age appropriate, right? This is very real, whether you're actually working um, or whether you're up for jobs. This is a very real topic. So think before you tweet, guys, okay? And this is especially important. That's why I say think before you tweet. It's very important on Twitter because sometimes people are viewing tweets out of context or they're seeing replies out of context. And so they don't see the whole conversation. So when I say think before you retweet, that means think before you reply. That's anything that you're putting out there on social media. Okay. Um, I, I say this a lot, but I think it's really important. Um, my mom, she was a first grade teacher for over 30 years. And every day they do the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. And after the Pledge of Allegiance, all the little first graders would stand there and say, what you put out comes back to you. And they would do that motion. What you put out comes back to you. And I remember the first time I saw that and it really stuck with me is actually how I, how I was raised and why I'm actually really good on social media. Um, before you guys join Hot Topic Conversations all the time, um, I want you to think about those little first graders saying, what you put out comes back to you. I want you to use your voice. Um, I want you to speak out for everything you believe in, but try to speak out for what you're for instead of what you're against, okay? You're gonna be spreading more positive vibes out there because you have to know if you are spreading negativity out on social media, that's what you're gonna attract back to you. And you're gonna wonder why you have all these like negative people and negative vibes in your, in your tribe right? It's totally because of what you're putting out there. If you're putting out things in a more positive light because you're posting about what you're for instead of what you're against, you're going to attract more positive people and positive vibes. It's so important. Okay, guys. So if you are going to jump, drop out, you know, go out there, speak about, and when I say controversial, I'm talking politics. I'm not talking about civil rights issues. That's totally different. Um, think about being more positive and speaking about what you're for instead of what you're against. Okay. <laughs> Adam. Yes, Adam. I won't even read that, but yes. <laughs> All right. So just remember, guys, what you put out comes back to you. Okay. Think before you tweet. Number nine, you guys are approaching your followers backwards. So many of you are. Okay. Um, and I know why, because it's the business. You've been told like, you know, followers might help you get cast. Okay. But the biggest thing I mistake I see you guys making with, with your followers is you're focusing on the number of followers instead of really focusing on growing a tribe of people, a community of like-minded people, right? You're just focused on this headcount and this number, okay? Um, and a following is, is so much more than that, guys. It's an audience. And I'm sure as an actor, you know how important an audience is for your career. I don't know an actor who doesn't know that's important, okay? So following is an audience. It's not just a number on a screen. 
Because he, here's where the mistake happens. When you guys are so focused on that number on the screen and just getting more headcounts so that you can get cast, you start to make silly decisions about how you get those followers, right? You do pods, you do like, you know, you follow for follow kind of things where you're not even attracting the right people. Or worse, you go buy followers, you go buy likes. And those fake accounts, those people will never add value to your social media and will never add value to your career. Okay. Um, and especially if they're fake, because you got to think about it, you're going to have all these followers and zero engagement, right? And I don't care what platform you're on, that will kill you with any algorithm. Okay. And you know, we're in a different place than we were five years ago when people were getting cast for social media followings. People now are smart. They are just like with any influencer, they will scan your account. They will get the demographic of your account, your engagement numbers. You're not just going to get cast for a number on the screen. You're going to get cast because you have an engaged audience, right? Um, and the right engaged audience. You know, if you got this big engaged audience of men, but the demographic for their product or their film is women, then, hey, you're not a good fit. Okay, guys, so I just want you to really start approaching your followers as an audience, not just a number on the screen. Okay, and never, 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 never buy followers or likes or anything like that, because they won't add any value to your career. And even worse, they could really damage a relationship. Remember, people want to work with people in this business that they know, like and trust and buying followers and things like that kind of make me lose that trust factor. Right? Right? Okay, cool. What is that? You immediately alienate half your audience. MJ, can, let me know what you mean by that. But I think I think you're talking about um, about what you're speaking out for. OK. OK, cool. Um, so that is approaching your idea, your followers the right way. OK, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense about that, guys. OK. Uh, Whitney, hi, Heidi. Is it okay if I post about this live on social media? Of course, you guys can take a screenshot if you want right now. Tag me on social media. I'll share it as well. Okay, totally, totally. Yes, MJ, by political. Yeah, you do actually have to be careful, especially if you're on a show. Um, Sophie Turner has come out publicly a couple years ago. Um, she got in trouble with Game of Thrones because she was posting about politics and it was actually alienating their audience. Right. Um, and I know some of you guys will be like, well, that's not fair. They're an actor. Some of this stuff is in contracts now, guys, that you have to be on brand with the show that you're signing on for. So, yes, when you sign on for that, you got to think about what the brand of the product, if it's a commercial or the brand of the show that you're on. OK, it, it, it's a business. Right. That's why go out and create your own content, become your own producer. And then you can speak out a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so number 10, so I can get to questions is simple and short. And that is not having a social media strategy. It's that simple. Um, and this happens too, because you know, a lot of you guys are going from like using social media for fun to then trying to use it to create opportunities and relationships. So you're going from using it for playtime to using it with a purpose. And they are to two totally different things. Okay. Um, having a plan in place for your social media. So having a strategy will help you connect to more people, will help you build a fan base faster, and will actually help you run your social media in minutes a day instead of hours. OK, so you need to have a strategy in place. Um, you know, without a strategy, you're going to become frustrated. You're not going to see results and you're going to spend hours on that in that rabbit hole every day. Um, now, strategy is a huge topic as well. Um, but definitely uh, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Heidi Dean. There's like, I don't know, there might be close to 100 videos there that will help you set up a social media strategy. And that ebook I told you about, too, is a step by step 30 page strategy for social media for your acting career. Ebook for actors in the description. Okay, cool guys. So so let's just go through those 10 things really fast and then I'm gonna open up the floor to you guys. Don't be a spoiler. Don't be a retweet robot. Make sure we hear your voice, okay? Um, follow instructions for those self, self submissions. Don't be a bitter actor. Be kind online. Remember, tweet people the way you want to be tweeted. <laughs> um, clean up that first impression. Your first impression is making you look like a rookie. Um, make sure that you are approaching your relationships the right way. You're making it a conversation. You're making it a we, not just a me, me, me. Um, number eight, you're going to think before you tweet, right, or post. Number nine, you're going to start approaching your followers like a community, a tribe, and not just a number on the screen. And number 10, you guys are going to start setting up a social media strategy today 
so you can start creating opportunities for your career. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Let me see some love in the chat so I know that you guys are actually going to do the work. There's a lot of these chats going on, a lot of these lives, guys. And I think because you watch things and they're free, um, sometimes that makes us not do the work. So I want to see pinky swears. I want to see that you guys are actually going to do the work after you do this. You're spending this 45 minutes now with me. Do the work, okay? All right. I'm going to go up a little bit and start to get some questions, guys. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Jean, I've said some vicious, clever, but vicious things on Twitter that are political. Will that be seen months from now? Is the damage done? Well, you can always do a cleanup at any point on your account. Um, it depends who's going to employ you. If it's really vicious, I might just go delete it. You know, it, depending on where you're in your career, nobody may, you know, people might not have seen it if you don't have a big audience and maybe nobody screenshot it. You're fine. But I, I would I would clear it up because depending on who you're working for um, and what part of the industry you're in, um, if you have, you know, if you want to be on family friendly networks, if you are going to become any kind of brand ambassador, so say you do commercials, um, you know, think Flow, AT&T Girl you know, around that, that, that kind of realm of ambassadors like that. It's very customary for them to do a social media scan. Okay. Especially have you been watching the news? How many people, how many actors were fired from jobs in the past two weeks because of things they've said on their account? So if you think you've said anything negative about politics, race, human, human, anything like get rid of it, do a scan on your accounts, guys, just get rid of it. Don't let that hurt you or keep you from doing a job in the future. Okay, please, please, please. Um, because you don't know who's gonna see it, Gene. Is it really worth it? Um, if you do political satire, if if that's if that's your realm, then people are gonna expect it. But if you're an actor, that's that those political statements don't really they don't line up with you using your social media for your career. So up to you, Gene, but I would just uh I I'd be careful, you know. Um I do have a YouTube video called clean up your social media for actors. If you look that up on YouTube um, and it actually walks you through, um, it's very similar to the one I did for backstage, but I actually show you like how to scrub your account. Um, yeah, I've had to do this with some clients from networks. Like how do we go back? What tools can we use to delete things that may have not been so good? Okay. Um, and that's all in there. So, all right. Um, but no, the damage is not done. Go clean that up. Okay. Aaron, I am not a social media guy at all. Never posted anything. How damaging could that be? Well, Aaron, the only problem with that is if you're just not using social media, somebody else is going to be using it. And it kind of shows me that you're not a team player and not just me. That's kind of how the industry looks at it. So say, you know, you're up against something for some, with somebody else. You guys are equally as talented. You both could get it. They don't know who to pick. That's where social media numbers sometimes come into play. But sometimes numbers don't mean like millions of followers. Sometimes it's just the fact that like, Aaron's not using social media and Brett Shuford is, right? Just pulling some names from the chat here. So Brett is going to be more likely to get that part than Aaron because he's bringing an audience, even if it's 500, he can share that with his fans, okay? Um, Aaron, what I suggest is that um, your posting always starts from you, okay? A posting strategy. I know that a lot of people want like just post ideas and I got those for you guys like crazy on, you know, on my, my uh, YouTube channel, but... You can't just use those post ideas. You have to start from who you are. We have to figure out who you are. You have to decide what you're comfortable with posting, what you're not comfortable with posting. Um, really what I call your fab four. So those four things that make you fabulous that you're going to talk about over and over again. You're going to talk about them on social media. You're going to talk about them on the red carpet. These are the things that we start recognizing you for as an actor and a human being. And guess what? That's where your post ideas stem from. Are these fabulous four things that make you you? Okay, Aaron. So you should have things to post about because there, you know, of course, one might be acting, but my, one might be that you love your dog or you're a really happy dad or you love the outdoors. These are other things that you're letting us in to learn a little bit more about your story and to help us connect you. Okay, Aaron. So I really invite you to do that work. And actually, <laughs> I've done so many lives now, I can send you to another live. We had a what to post on social media for actors, Aaron, um, a month ago. And that one, I literally just walked you through the, the whole strategy I just talked about is figuring out how to put the me in your social media, um, and then what to post. Okay. And that one, I gave you like 30 post ideas too. Um, so go check that out, Aaron. Holy questions. Okay. I am <laughs> the whole feed just jumped, jumped up. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 
uh, Patricia, where's the ebook you mentioned? It should be in the description um, or just go to ebookforactors.com and it will come up there. Okay. Um, I'm only going to answer social media questions, guys. Um, I just saw a question about um, getting a manager, but I, we only have so much time and I want to make sure that we just talk about social media for actors. Okay. Are there any effective, Mark, are there any effective strategies for driving engagement from your audience? Um, yes. Um, I'd say an overall strategy is shifting your approach from just talking at people to talking with them. OK, so making that switch of making your post more of a conversation and we can't do this with every post, but we can do this in a lot of different ways. We can make our post a question and sometimes it's actually just saying the post or the caption and then adding a question at the end. You know, what do you think? Has this happened to you? Um, you know, just adding some simple question to get people engaging. Then it doesn't feel like you're talking at us. You're talking with us. OK, I always say too on Instagram, whenever you're creating a post, you need to say, what do I want them to see? How do I want to make them feel? And what do I want to make them do? And Mark, the last question, what do I want to make them do is going to get them to engage. It's what's called a call to action. You know, do you want them to comment? Do you want them to like? Do you want them to go to the link in your bio? Um, what do you want them to do? The more you think, do I have a call to action on this post? The more you're going to get people to do things, right? And if your account, if you're on your account, if you're used to just talking at people, know that it may take two to three to four weeks of putting these call to actions and getting people to engage to have people getting get used to you having a conversation, right? We get used to doing something every day with someone we like on social media. And when they mix that up, it sometimes, you know, it's a habit. We have to, we have to break that. So try that, try adding some call to actions, Mark, to your post and really thinking about what do I want them to see? What do I want? How do I want to make them feel? And what do I want to make them do? Okay. And that's going to get you more engagement. Um, Jay Elkin, what if you don't have any social media accounts? Will casting directors not consider you for the roles? No, I mean, not casting direct. You can decide to be on cast uh, on social media or not, but you do have to know at some point it will affect you. Like there will be some project that you don't get called in for because you don't have social media or maybe you get called in for, but then further along in the process, they're like, oh, well, this other guy's on social media. He can help spread the word. Or you have to know social media is integrated into the promotional campaigns for shows now. So maybe they're planning on having the cast live tweet. You know, if you get on a show where the cast is live tweeting and you're not on social media, the only person that's getting hurt here is you because live tweeting is an amazing way to grow your audience. Right. And you're bringing that audience with you with every show. So by deciding to not be on social media, that's a huge missed opportunity there. OK, because an audience for an actor is bargaining power. I have a client. This was like six months ago. He built his following on his own. It wasn't because he was a big star. You know, yes, he had done lots of little guest stars and and co-stars. And um, but he got a role in a film and was able to negotiate for a significant more money, higher pay, because he was bringing a following with him. So cool, right? And he had built it himself. So just know that it's power to, in a business world, actors don't have a lot of power. Being able to build that audience and saying, hey, wait, you want me to post for your show? Well, I have this audience that I brought with me. Uh, you got to pay me for that. Happens all the time. So, so I invite you, you know, Jay Elkin, to think about what what it could do for you, okay? Even if it just means hopping on one platform, you don't have to be everywhere, but think about what platform that might play to your strengths. Maybe you wanna create content. Maybe you wanna create short form content and guess what? TikTok might be a great place for you to do that. Start there and then add other platforms when it's time, okay? All right, I'm going to get through as many as I can. Um, okay, what about Marla? What about doing it away when we reach subscribers? Um, yeah, that can be, a, I mean, that can be a, a great idea. It depends on how many subscribers. Because if you do a giveaway and you only have like, say you only have a thousand subscribers and you're trying to reach, you know, 5,000 <laughs> or maybe it's small, 2,000. Well, you can do a giveaway, but how engaged are those 1,000? So I don't, I don't suggest that actors invest a lot of money in their social media. Like if you're giving away something that's like $500, then like that's a lot of money to just get a thousand followers and you have to know sometimes those people aren't going to stick around okay it depends what you mean by that marla there are companies that 
um, PR companies, uh, social media growth companies that will help pair you up with influencers that do contests that have the same audience as you. And that can help through collaborations, through them talking about your account, grow your account. That I say yes to. But just you randomly doing a contest, just be careful. I wouldn't invest too much of your own money um, if you're following a small, because I don't think you're going to see the results. Okay. Um, Sophie, where's the cleanup live? I think she put it further up. Um, if you go onto Backstages, that's on Backstages channel. There's like a whole social media playlist, I think of like seven lives that I've done. And it's in there. It's like how to clean up, um, clean up your social media for actors, I think it's called. Okay. All right. All right. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, um, totes, pinky swear. Okay. Okay. Are hashtags on Instagram or Twitter? okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not only okay, but they're necessary. You got to think about it. If you're Beyonce, you don't need hashtags, right? She doesn't need to use hashtags because people are already looking her up. People are going to find her. Um, and Instagram is just going to suggest her account to everybody because she's Beyonce. But what hashtags do is they help us get in front of other people's accounts, right? They Hashtags are conversations. And by using hashtags, it actually helps us find like-minded people. So they are totally necessary. Um, I dove into how to use hashtags in the Instagram for Actors Live on Backstage. So go watch that one. Um, but just keep in mind as a quick answer, I Sebastian, I think it is. Um, Twitter, two to three hashtags max, even one to two, um, is really the sweet spot. They've done a lot of research on it. I really think because Twitter, it's all conversations. Um, if you if you really hashtag stuff your tweet, number one, you don't even have that many characters anyways. You got 280 characters. But when you put a bunch of hashtags everywhere, it kind of looks like spam and no one wants to engage with it. So if you want more engagement on Twitter with hashtags, I say stick to one to two, but three max. Um, and Instagram, you can actually use 30 relevant hashtags on your post if they're relevant, okay? You can use them in the first comment or you can use them in the caption, okay? Um, but they have to be relevant if you're going to use up to 30. And that is straight from Instagram, guys. There were a lot of myths last year that you can't use 30, you're gonna get banned and that's all false. Okay, um, all right. Allie, so what are the kinds of things you recommend to post on social media to create an audience? Um, this is just like what I was talking about with someone that I don't know their name, um, but we were talking about um, he wasn't posting much. What you need to post about, you first, you've got to think about what your audience is, Allie. Who, who would you like to have in your tribe, right? Normally, people that are going to be in your tribe are people who do what you do, people who love what you love, or as an actor, if you're a working actor, people that are fans of your show. I'm going to say that again. As an actor, when you're trying to figure out who your audience might be, normally the three categories they fall into, and that you, they might be all three, um, is people who do what you do. These might be fellow artists, people in the industry, people who love what you love. This might be love the other things you're talking about that are special to you, or people who are fans of your show. Okay? So you, of course, need to create content that aligns with that. Okay. And that live, the what to post on social media, will dive into that for you, Allie. Okay. I'm giving you guys kind of like quick rapid fire questions because there are so many and I can't, I can stay on until about like 1250. I have a client at one o'clock. So um, let's see. Okay. Sorry. The whole stream just moved. So I missed your question. Um, just post it again. Um, I already saw some of these questions. Um, MJ Phoenix, what is your recommendation on having separate personal and professional accounts? I'm current. I currently have two Facebook and two Instagram accounts. Thoughts? Um, nothing's private on social media. That's my thought. And if you, I mean, unless you're saying your Facebook accounts is a, is, if it's a Facebook profile and a page, that is fine. Those are two different things. But just having two Instagram accounts, that one is your public persona and one's your private, you're going to be posting some of the same things and who are your friends as an actor over time they're going to be other actors other people in the business so what are you trying to keep from some people and not other people right nothing's private and i can tell you people that are trying to run two separate instagram accounts to be like public and then one just about their actor's life they don't build audiences they don't because people don't want to just hear about your actor's life they want to see some of the things that are on the other account so what i invite you to do mj is Figure out your online persona. This is something we talked about um, uh, in that live. This is 
this, everyone should go watch the what to post on social media live because we're getting a lot of posting questions. Um, you need to really figure out, MJ, what your online persona is as an actor. You know, what are you going to post about? And what are your nunyas? That's what I call them. Those are the things that are nunya business. Okay. So figure out what makes you you and then scratch off your nunyas, those things that you are not comfortable with sharing with the world. What's left is your public persona that will be in your public Instagram account. Okay. You don't have to tell us your whole story, but you need to have an account that has a little bit of both your actor's life and who you are as a human. And I find when people try to have public and private, they each suffer and they just don't end up building an account. And they end up saying too much on the private account. That's not really private. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Gail, so many platforms, so little time. Is there a way to prioritize? Um, yes. <laughs> I was here two weeks ago. We talked about what social media platforms to be uh, on for an actor. Gail, your, the platforms you choose should always help you reach your goals. You don't need to be on every platform, but you need to make sure that you need to ask some key questions. What platforms are you on and what are your goals for those? So are you on social media to build an audience? Are you on social media to meet new people in the business? Are you on social media to stay top of mind with existing connections? Are you on social media because you're on a show and you have requirements for being on that show, live tweeting, Instagram takeovers? When you answer those four questions and you put them in order of importance, you will know exactly what platform to be on. And that live, I'm just doing infomercials for all my other lives on backstage. Um, that live I did two weeks ago, Gail, will break down that process. You don't need to be everywhere, but it will tell you exactly where to be. Okay. Um, what I do suggest, Gail, is that you grab your username everywhere you know, consistent username that's either your name, but if you can't get it, your Gail Payne, you might not be able to get it, as close to your name everywhere, so that if you do need to use something, if something does end up being um, in a contract, say you end up being on a show that has a younger demographic, well, guess what? You might be on TikTok or Snapchat, um, or maybe you're spending more time on Instagram. So make sure you grab your name everywhere just in case you need it, okay? All right, all right, okay. Let's see. The best thing would be to do is delete old accounts and get a new one if I'm new to the business, right? Um, it depends. Like you got to think about your fans. Um, depending. Well, it depends on what you you know when you started as an actor. Some of your friends might be a fan, and they're going to be there engaging with your post. So it really, it really depends, uh, Mateo. Um, if you feel comfortable, because I know a lot of younger actors don't feel comfortable now making their account about their acting career when they're their friends from like high school uh, or middle school on the same account. So you may want to just create a new one for that reason. Um, but you got to know that those people that already follow you, they're going to follow your journey. They love you. They are probably going to be the most engaged people on your accounts. So don't necessarily start over. You might need to do some cleanup to make sure it's appropriate for your career. Okay. Um, um, Rebecca, I've been approached by a fairly well-known up-and-coming skincare brand who want me as an ambassador. Is it wise for me to accept? Ooh, this is a whole live topic in itself. Um, and it's something I talk about in some of my, like my Insta Actor class. We talk about how to grow your following, how to do even uh, collaborations and sponsorships. Um, it Honestly, Rebecca, that's like a conversation I have to have just with you. Um, but it, it's really, it's up to you. What, you know, are they paying you? Never. There's a lot of collaborations out there where you have to like buy the product and then you get a commission off of it. Uh, uh, nope, nope. So make sure that, you know, you are getting paid. <laughs> you are an actor. You could actually do a commercial for a well-known skincare company. So you are actually valuable to them. Okay. So make sure it's not just uh, an exchange. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Um, as an actor, like I said, you could be doing commercials for them. So um, make sure that you're getting compensated for it uh, based on your followers and your engagement. Okay. Um, how to find a manager, how to find the agent. Guys, I'm only going to answer social media questions. Um, but no, if you are on TikTok, go find me on TikTok. I'm marketing for actors. Um, and I'm starting a how to get an agent series today on my TikTok. So don't have time for it here because we're going to talk social media. Um, okay. Holy questions, guys. I'm not going to get all to all of these, but I am going to be back next Tuesday. And we're specifically going to talk Twitter. Um, I 
love all my social media accounts, but Twitter is my jam. I love Twitter. Um, and I always have, and I'm going to teach you guys how to grow an audience step-by-step on Twitter next Tuesday. So join me there and I'll be doing Q and A at the end of that too. So if I didn't get your question, um, Adam, are tools like Hootsuite and Buffer worth it? Schedulers can just make you work smarter, not harder. So yeah, I mean, Hootsuite and Buffer, they both have free versions. So free versions. Yeah, they're totally worth it. <laughs> um, I like Hootsuite because um, it's not just a scheduler, but we can see streams of conversations and interact with them. So I just realized I just talked to Adam. We had a private conversation there because some of you guys don't know what those are. Um, Hootsuite and Buffer are social media schedulers. And he was asking, are they worth it? Um, they can be like, I use Planoly on Instagram to schedule my grid. And I can tell you over the course of the year, it saves me probably weeks of time. Like it's, it just makes my life so much easier. So yes, uh, Lisa, loads of information. Thank you for a great journey of knowledge today. You're welcome. I, I never want you guys to show up on a live where you don't learn something. Always bring a pen and a paper. We are going to learn, learn, learn. Okay. Pierce, do you think aspiring actors should set up a YouTube channel or avoid being called a YouTuber? There is nothing wrong with being called a YouTuber, Pierce. Not at all. If you can, if you can build a channel, that is an audience, just like we talked about today. Okay, um, that is that is really thinking from like five years ago because there were a lot of actors on a lot of people on YouTube that built audiences and then they randomly became actors with like no training or anything. But now, guys, there's actors that are building like channels with millions of not millions of subscribers, right? And these people have real acting training and real credits, but they're creating real content to create real changes in their career, okay? So there is no like, you're gonna be called a YouTuber. No, being a YouTuber and an actor, especially an actor that has um, trained, that is just moving your career forward. So don't be afraid about that, Pierce. And I have a whole live on how to uh, set up your YouTube channel. It's like very detailed. So look at, and that's on backstage as well. Um, I feel like I've been living here on backstage for two months now. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions and then I'm, I'm gonna go, but hey, you guys, if you didn't know, um, I'm the opening act to Ricky Gervais today. Uh, amazing, right? He is on Zoom at one o'clock. I don't know if there are any seats left. There were just a little while ago. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to Backstage because Backstage for years, I mean, you guys, they have given back to the community over and over and over again. They're getting you guys through quarantine. They're bringing amazing experts and speakers and actors like Ricky um, here, right? Um, I can't believe I'm opening for Ricky. <laughs> She honestly, the biggest day was when Kevin Bacon and I were going live on the same day. That kind of brought that whole like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, just a whole lot closer. Thank you backstage. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Oh my goodness. How do I choose the last couple questions? Um, Rita, it would help in the future if you had some auto generate captioning option. I don't think we can do that for live um, on YouTube. You can do it after the fact. So. And I never know what I, yeah, be auto-generated because I don't always know what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Eden, a lot of companies reach out to you first and they want you to buy the product first, but no, never agree to that. It's, it's, it's not technically a scam, but you're, it is because you're going to get like 5%, you know, or 2%. It's so small. You buy the product and then you get a very small percent when you sell it. And how big is your following? Like, you're not going to make any money. It's actually a, kind of a scam for them to sell stuff. Um, and they're reaching out to people that have like 500 followers. Like that's, those aren't people that usually are influencers or, or micro influencers. Okay. Um, okay. Mateo just followed me on TikTok. Awesome. Yeah. I'll start that. Um, I'm going to start that how to get an agent series today. Um, okay. I'm going to pick one more and there, there is the link to go see Ricky. Um, <laughs> so cool. Right. Uh, Last question. Oh my goodness, so many questions. Um, how do we come up with fun, witty, creative captions for our content and pictures? Great question. Um, first of all, I want you to ask, oh, where's your name? It just, everything just moved. See Michelle Music, no, Marla. Um, I would start with, you know, captions are going to either entertain, they're going to inspire, or um, they're going to educate. So you got to decide what, where's it going to fit? 
You know, they don't always have to be, you know, clever and funny, you know, because some of your posts aren't going to be that. Some of your posts are might inspire, right? So that's the starting point for your captions is just deciding, are you going to educate? Are you going to inspire? Are you going to entertain? And then do that, okay? There's a lot of questions you can ask. Um, and in light of time, um, I'm just going to send you to a YouTube video. Um, how to write better captions for actors. It's on my channel. It gives you 10 questions to ask every time you have a photo that will help you come up with engaging, inspiring, um, entertaining captions. Okay, Marla, go find how to create better captions um, for actors on my YouTube channel. Just look it up on YouTube. Look up social media for actors on YouTube. I'm everywhere, okay? <laughs> See, Michelle, thank you, Heidi. I met you in Dallas at a workshop and you were so sweet. Your info is helpful. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Women in Film Dallas. I was speaking there last year. That was great. So there you go. Yes, I am brave for opening. I'm not opening for Ricky on Zoom. I'm opening right here. That was a joke, but <laughs> um, never thought I'd be opening for Ricky. But that's it for today, guys. Um, uh, if I didn't answer we ran out of time. I actually stayed on later than I was going to. Um, but find me on social media. I'm marketing for actors, the number four. I answer questions. I go live all the time, everywhere. <laughs> I'll be going live on my YouTube channel next week. And here, not same time, one o'clock on Eastern time on Tuesday. Um, I don't know the date, the 7th, I think. I'm all about Twitter for actors. So I will see you guys there. And till next time, I will see you on social media. Bye. Thanks for joining me.